I received a lot of comments about my tail lights on my 65 Impala. I've had people comment on the videos and a lot of people were interested in, in them in person. So uh, when I installed these, I bought them from eBay from a company called Easy Performance. Uh, when I installed them, it was before I started making YouTube videos. So what I'll, my brother has a 66 Caprice and he's interested in putting these same type tail lights in his 66 Caprice. So I'm gonna make a video that shows the installation and it will be the same pretty much on the 65. Uh, 65, you have to hook up all three pieces. It, the 65 comes with six circuit boards and the 66 has one on each side, so the 66 is actually easier, but it's the same principle. I'm sure it's for pretty much every car they make taillights for, it'll be the same. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Thank you. So the first thing we gotta do is remove the whole taillight from the uh, car, the bezel and all, and there's, there's a lot of different bolts that hold it on. Uh, there's several that run up Run up through here, there's one in the middle, one on each end. And I think the tail light and the bezel comes all out. I believe it'd be the same on the Impala and the Caprice, even though the bezels look different. So we took the four nuts off the back and it was kind of stuck because of the gasket. And they come out fairly easy. The whole assembly came out with just taking those four, four nuts off, you can see. All right, so we're gonna disassemble the tail light by taking out all these screws. So it comes apart like that. And while we got it apart, we'll clean all the dirt out of the lens. So the instructions has you to set these aluminum standoffs in the housing and mark it with a black marker around it and drill a 1 8 inch hole around it. And there's six of them total and it comes with screws that are 440 screws that you put through those holes. So, Hopefully I got the holes lined up good enough. All right, so I drilled the 1 8 inch holes, put in the 440 screws, and all the holes came out good. It mounts in there good and solid, and I ran the wires out the, out the, the last hole. So the way they've got this thing set up is it's got the socket that goes into the, uh, original socket. I'm probably not going to do it that way because we've had a lot of trouble with the original GM sockets not being uh, good and, we, and, and the aftermarket ones are worse. So we're going to just uh, butt splice these wires in and I'm going to actually put a ring terminal on and ground the ground directly to the tail light housing because the ground tends to be the biggest problem with these. So what I did on this one is I took off the socket that plugs into the light bulb. I chopped it off. I grounded the ground directly to the frame of the bezel. And these two are gonna be plugged in. One of these is gonna be the running lights and one's gonna be the brake lights. So now when I put the, up, the same ends on the other side, I don't have to deal with the bad design connectors that Chevrolet made or General Motors made. So now I'm just gonna screw the bezel back together. I've got all this complete. 
So we're taking all the bulb sockets off because we're not using them because of the problem with them not getting good contact sometimes. We're all, and the way a 66 is, you only need one set of wires on each side to power everything up. They all connect. They all connect together. So we're gonna uh, just eliminate these sockets and use one set and connect them with uh, appliance lugs. We're gonna keep the old wires there in case somebody wants to ever go back to the original. So if you don't care about the fancy stuff that these tail lights do, uh, you can just hook up the original wires. And right now it's very bright out here. But you can see the LEDs are in there. And then when he hits the, the brake light, they get brighter. So if you didn't want to go any further, you could actually leave them as they are right now. These will really look good after dark. Uh, but to get in order to, yeah, there's with the signal. But in order to get all the fancy functions, we got to run a pink wire to the ignition power. And it's got to go to both sides. We've got a pink wire sticking out of each one of these, so we're going to run it to the front. It's not really that big of a deal. All right, so we ran the pink wire to the front of the car, ran it up here to the keyed on power. Uh, it has to be on when the key switch is on. And in our case, we hooked it to the circuit that the radio is hooked to. And I don't think we'll have any problems with it, but if, it, if we did, we could move it to something else. So now that we got that on, uh, we've got to set up the tail lights. Uh, they have like 10 or 11 different things that they'll do. And there's a little tiny button in the back of the tail light that you got to push to make them do their tricks. And it actually holds the memory wherever you put it, even with, with the battery power disconnected. So we're getting ready to do that. All right, so we got them installed and there's a little button on the back of them that you have to press to change patterns. Uh, like you can see right now, park lights are on when he hit, when he hits the brake lights. That's what they do. When he turns on the signal, it's like a chasing light. So it took us about three hours to install these and it's very hot here, but they're really not that hard to install. Uh, we took three hours and go ahead and uh, start it up. Hit the brakes. All right, so this is what we got now. And now we're gonna, it's gonna turn on the signal so you can see it. And it's really cool, it's a really cool upgrade. Cost about 300 and something dollars. Kind of expensive, but really nice.